Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about my early days in fish keeping and in particular I want to talk about the day that changed my life. It made this whole entire fish room possible. So early on, if you follow my videos, you remember my last video where I talked about my early days of fish keeping. My wife brought home a small corner tank that held maybe half gallon uh, water, had a few little endlers swimming around in it and nothing much more. So eventually I moved them into a 10 gallon tank in my office. And for the longest time, I don't know, maybe six months or nine months, I had this 10 gallon tank in my office and I was absolutely enthralled by it. I spent so much time standing in front of this tank. I had lost my fear of doing water changes and tinkering with the tank. Up until then, I didn't really know what was going on in a fish tank. I didn't understand how the fish stayed alive and so on and so forth. It was my discovery of the nitrogen cycle and my understanding of that that really opened up the door to fish keeping for me uh, in the beginning. Once I had my feet, you know, under me a little bit and I kind of understood what was going on there, I got a lot more bold and started tinkering around with this little 10 gallon tank I had. And I would try this kind of fish and that kind of fish. And of course, being very new to the hobby and the way I was doing water changes and tinkering with it all the time, I lost a lot of fish. And I also would take fish from the PetSmart or the Petco where they have this two week guarantee. I know a lot of people tend to think of that in terms of if the fish die within the first two weeks, but that's not what the guarantee says. The guarantee says you can just bring them back within two weeks. And so I would take half a dozen of one particular kind of fish home and I would keep them for 13 days and then I would take them back to the store. I'd catch them all out of the tank and put them back in their bags and I'd take them back and I would get four or five other fish and some different type of fish and I'd bring them home and I'd keep them for 13 days and I'd take them back. And in addition to doing that, I would rescape the tank once every couple of weeks because I really wanted to try what this looks like. And I wanted to see what it looks like with this kind of plan. You know, I'm working with a 10 gallon tank. I don't have a lot of space here to do a lot of things. And while I was sitting there one day, a little bit frustrated that I wanted to pretty much own every fish that was available for me at the PetSmart and I simply could not cram all of them into my 10 gallon tank, I was hit with a revelation. It hit me like a ton of bricks. The sudden realization that I could have more than one fish tank. There was no law or rule making me only have that 10 gallon tank, that I could have more than one. And so after that stunning realization, I had to collect myself and I ran up to the Walmart and I bought a huge tank. I bought this thing. It was so big. I could not believe it. And I bought it home and got it all set up and was excited. And it just afforded me the opportunity to put all kinds of fish in it. It was so much bigger than anything I'd ever experienced before. And that enabled me to put this kind of fish in it and that kind of fish in it. And when those fish died, I'd try these kind of fish in it. And that is why my 29 miscellaneous is called my 29 miscellaneous. When I brought that tank home, I could not get over the size of how big that 29 gallon tank was. Remember, I went from about a year of looking at a little corner tank that was, you know, yay big to the massive 10 gallon tank. And about the time I was out growing the 10 gallon tank, that 29 seemed like a beast and I was able to put all kinds of fish in it. And that is where my striped Raphael, that's now in my 55 gallon Garami tank, got his start, came home about that big and spent the first several months in that tank. Of course, the loaches that you see in there now, the uh, striped loaches that I have in there, uh, they came home, I got them in the mail and they came home right into that tank and they've been there ever since. And so, you know, there are some early inhabitants of that tank that are still in there, but by and large, all the, the fish you see in there have been, you know, much, much more recent additions I've taken and, um, you know, I've stopped messing around with that tank a long time ago and it's stabilized. So anybody that's actually wondering why I call that my 29 miscellaneous tank, that's exactly why I call it that. When I first had that tank set up, I had all kinds of different stuff in it and I tried different scapes and I tried buying the plastic you know, fake coral looking structures and fake rocks. And I tried this and that and the other thing. And I used to do all kinds of different stuff. And so in my last video, I asked everybody if you enjoyed this kind of video and just hearing stories about my early fish keeping days or whatever, maybe a little inspiration uh, for you to be a little more bold and try different things, maybe experiment around a little bit, have some fun. It is supposed to be a hobby, remember? 
Um, if you like hearing this kind of stuff, let me know and I can, you know, tell you other stories. I'd love to tell you some of the tanks I escaped out and designed in my very early days. I did some really wild stuff. Some of, some of the ugliest fish tanks I've ever seen in my life were right here in my basement that I created myself and they were just god awful. But it was fun and I learned stuff and I had a good time and that's what it's all about. Like I keep saying, this is a hobby. We're supposed to be enjoying it. So be creative, have fun, you know, just enjoy it. It's a hobby. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you real soon in the next one.